What is going on, people? Today, we're going to get into something a little different. This is Glendon Cameron, your hustling godfather. And today, I have some of the best information that I've ever put out for you. Seriously, it's something that I do and something that you should do. Let's uh, deal with some stuff. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about disruptive mail. And this kind of ties into, this actually ties into the topic of the video. I had this happen before where everything that could go wrong would go wrong. Fortunately, I am way more seasoned because last time this happened, I was using Vidcaster to set up the Hustler Mindset Project. And I, I had to dance real hard for like a week it just didn't work. They didn't know. Uh, to their credit, Vidcaster was way more responsive. They took care of me. They did certain things. And then it got to working. I think whenever you live in truth, whenever you do certain things that you tell people what actually works, that I don't think it's like a person thing. I think it's an energy thing because. I feel that disruptive mail is going to be like 10 times better than this channel. And I'm just getting started. So part of that is what I'm going to talk about today. And I, I have a few announcements. Disruptive mail sites down. Can't get in. Just talked about that. Ah, since disruptive mail sites down, I'm doing 50% off of all courses. Links below. You spend $350 or more, you get the first tier of disruptive mail. Um, we're already talking about the hardships and when things go crazy. When I was working on my Craigslist inbound dating system, and essentially what I did was I took my Craigslist marketing system and applied it to dating and made a few little tweaks, right? Well, it didn't go right the first time. It didn't go right the second month. It took me 60 days. Now, this is the thing. I was going hard. I was going really, 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 really hard. 60 days. Rejection. I got cussed out a few times. Yes. But Chet Holmes, the ultimate sales machine, you should get that book. I've recommended it several times. And I'll show it so you don't have to ask like 18 times, what book, what book, what book. Instead of rewinding the video and getting it, he said, pig headed determination. And I had pig headed determination. Let's see, Chet Holmes. Let me get this out the way because I know, I already know what's coming. I'll leave this up here. This is a very good book. The pig-headed determination that I just stuck with it, I stuck with it, I stuck with it. Now, what I didn't tell y'all about the Craigslist inbound dating profile, I had a goal. I had a big goal. My goal was to uh, fuck 100 chicks in a year. Now, you know, I've talked about 26 chicks in that one month, right? Well, I exceeded my goal. And this is what I got to tell you. All right. So y'all should have the ultimate sales machine. Get the book. Read it 10, 12 times. Read it. Read it. Read it. Because this is what you got to do to build an empire. You must have a goal, have goals 1,000 times bigger than your current circumstances. That's how you build an empire. That's the one thing you need. It's not money. It's not secrets. It is having a goal that is 1,000 times bigger than your current circumstances. Now, I didn't understand how this worked until later in life. I've always been a goal-oriented person. But when I started to set super ambitious goals, Like the Craigslist thing. Uh, before I developed this Craigslist system about, wow, 10 years ago, I would probably 10 a month, not 10 a month, 10 a year, 
about have sex with five to ten chicks a year. That was where I fat, fit in. Then I discovered this system, and I started doing what I did in a year and a month. Then in August, it was almost three times in one month what I did in almost three years. And I started to learn some stuff. But the thing is, this isn't about fucking a bunch of chicks. That, that's not the point. I know a lot of you are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. What happened, I set that ambitious goal. I wrote it down. Let me say that again. I wrote it down. And then I got to work. You must have written goals for whatever you want. Then you must go to work. Uh, there's a lot of talk about the secret, right? I don't believe in, quote, the secret. I believe in the law of action. You have a plan. You write it down. You figure some stuff out. You put it together. And then you go out and you execute. The writing it down, the conceptualization of the goal is super important. But... Doing the steps that it takes to realize the goal are way more important because how can you work towards something when you don't know what you're working toward? It's kind of hard. It's, it, it doesn't work out. But that's what's worked for me. And it worked for me with the storage auction business. I don't think I've told y'all about. I told the first half of the story where this guy was like, well, don't. Make the storage auction business your first thing because it'll just break your heart. Don't make it a full-time thing. Sheet of paper. Written goal. I want to make $100,000 my first year in the storage auction business. Made 90. There were some mistakes there. I could have exceeded that, but I made mistakes. So I just lived with it. And then the next year, I doubled that because written goals. Everything that I have written down with clear, precise goals, I have achieved or realized it at some point in my life. Everything. I remember when I was in that boarding house, not the boarding house, I was in the East Point house, and I wrote down some goals, and I just put it in the drawer. Then when I was moving out of the East Point house, I looked at it, done, 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 done. Goals give you so much power. Now, there are regular goals, there are tertiary goals, and then there are these, I call these supernova goals because this is not something that you're going to accomplish in a few weeks, months, or years. It's just not. I mean, this is something that is going to take essentially half of a lifetime or a lifetime to achieve. We're talking about 10 years, 20 years, minimum of consistent actions that move you forward to where you want to be. I don't think I've ever broken it down like this for y'all because I know that I've talked about a lot of stuff, but I don't think I talked about the mechanics of the process. Everything from having sex with 100 chicks, 100 plus in a year, to building a storage auction business, to building disruptive mail, I had written goals of where I wanted to be. And this is what's going to happen. In the case of my first year of the storage auction business, I came 10K under that goal. You're going to come under the goal or you're going to exceed the goal. You're rarely going to land on it. You're going to come under it or you're going to exceed it. This is why you need to have some kind of point of reference, something that you're aiming for. Uh, Benjamin, Benjamin May said, man is, I think, what was it? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up because I think this is important. And Benjamin Mays was an extraordinary dude. Uh, quotes, here we go. Because I didn't want to mess it up. Here it is. Not failure, but low aim is the sin. A long, long time ago, I'm going to show you this dude too. He was a bad brother. He was a bad, bad, bad dude. So let's go here. All right. So this is Dr. Benjamin Mays. 
There's a high school named after him and everything. If you got a little time, check him out. And he said that. And I remember I was in that boarding house, and that quote kind of ran by my mind. And I want you to understand, I was working some bullshit jobs, you know, working in landfills, doing roofing. And when I say bullshit, I wasn't doing the actual trade labor. I was like day labor, moving rocks, moving tar. This is what I was doing. And when I employed the Renecrate strategy, which I call Scheme Incorporated, once again, how I got the job at Renecrate, it was written on a piece of paper, Scheme Incorporated, and I had the five resumes, I had the whole thing mapped out, and it worked. It worked, because I wrote it down, I created a template, and I executed, and I executed, and I executed. Let's see what y'all got going on. In these comments, (laughs) <laughs> all right what's up jay preston honey bunny thank you for being the mod charlton appreciate you for being the moderator johnny walden archangel yes thanks for that mod action erica williams appreciate you this dude appreciate you oh erica williams with the five dollar super chat appreciate you Uh, they're just trying to keep us from getting the truth. I don't think it's necessarily people. I think it's the energy that I'm stirring up. I think that has a lot to do with it. Invisible censorship. That's funny. She was. This is one of the things that I hate about certain Facebook groups. If you're a content creator and you're in one of these groups that the like the site that isn't working is teachable. I was like not happy with Think of If, but Think of If has never done this to me. I mean, never. And I'm just sitting there like, OK, what the hell am I going to do? And I'll go in the group and I'll post some. Here's one of these little tricks. Like I didn't do all that. That was my last ditch effort. I'm frustrated. See, they hate us because they ain't us. Wow. Thank you, Diana Thompson, for being the moderator. Jay Fleming. Jay Fleming. Women don't want to let us men have anything. Steal our hoodies and our disruptive mail. (laughs) (laughs) Woo! Oh, man. After uh, Rashida Hodge, after sometimes you know you're on the right path. It's harder than it levels out. Yeah, that's that's pretty much Rashida where I'm at because I've been really frustrated and I think that's why the delivery's been just so fiery because I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing. And then when you depend upon other people who really don't care if you're successful, they really don't. And it's just frustrating. So today I just reached my point and then I'm gonna hit them with a charge back for the two months that, you know, if they don't get it figured out tonight. Uh, I'm going to call you campy plants. I watch Disruptive Mail, but I have enough respect to sit back and watch it because it's for men. I appreciate that because I say this, it, this, this, this person is just, and she left like four comments, right? And I was just like, I didn't even read them. Delete, delete, delete. And I think that's one of the best social media policies I've ever come up with. Wow, Jay Fleming. Ganji, thank you for being the mod. Women don't regularize their role in helping a boy become a man. It's to hand them over to you. You guessed it, a man. <laughs> it was done in ancient times. Josh Barr, appreciate the super chat. Matrix is stopping you from giving out red pills. That's funny. Gerbrand, I'm gonna answer this. Glendon, how do you fuck so many chicks and and, and they get and then not get any pregnant? Aren't condoms not really effective? I'm I'm gonna talk about this in disruptive mail. It is the selection of the woman. I want you guys to hear me. There is a certain type of woman out there. I don't care if you come in every orifice, you come up her nose, you come in that vagina like 20 times. She ain't getting pregnant. She just ain't getting pregnant because she's got something going on in her life. 
She is because see, pregnancy is a choice. One little slip up, you have a kid, okay. Two, three, four, five, that's a program, that's a trend. So part of my inbound dating profile is I had a situation where I chose women who had no interest in getting pregnant. If and this is really interesting, and you ask this question because you know, you, you hear people say, where are the women who are 30-something, 40-something, never been married with no kids? They're on Bumble. <laughs> They're on Plenty of Fish. Every day I see dozens and dozens of women, never had any kids, 30-something, never been married. They out here. They are out here. But where are you looking? So to, to be more succinct, part of what I did in creating my written profile was to, it was a desire to come across chicks who were just down for some fun. That was part of the written program, and I'll get into that in Disruptive Mail. Secrets from Mystery Writers. Honey Bunny, I believe in paranoia. Uh, pro, it is the belief that the universe conspires in your favor in order for you to work through. You need to be active on your goals and have momentum. I agree with that. Uh, let's see. It just jumped. Right now, your goal is just like generating a written contract for yourself. I like that, honey bunny, because you are really creating a contract for yourself. Because the way that I write my goals, and once again, I'll get into this in Disruptive Mail, but there's a way that you have to write the goal, there's a way you have to internally talk to yourself, and there's a way you have to execute. Sensei Snowden, I write goals, but I notice that I need to write the same goals consistently to develop my pattern more consistently. Typically, I write a goal down one to three times, and I look at it every day, but I don't rewrite it. That's true, Pamela. Uh, what you need to do is to write your goals down, and I'm going to go through the whole process of you need to kind of well not kind of you need to meditate on your goals let's see they ain't gonna cut it what I like to do is to read my goals out loud in front of a mirror while I'm looking at myself so that's kind of the mechanic stuff that I don't think I've ever told anyone about Kevin Davis, thoughts become things, visions become realities. Sissy Snowden, at times it can be a little tough when you feel like you can't, you can do every, feel like you can do everything. I'm learning to write consistently so I don't veer from the goal and switch to another. Scatter power is not power. Got you. Okay, so you, you have, you got this problem where you have so many good ideals, so many things you can do, and it's very hard for you to focus. Okay, I see why you're writing your same goals down over and over again. I get that. All right. Anthony Johnson, goals is what separates the haves from the half-nots. Teachings of Earl Nightingale and Napoleon Hill. I see you, G. It's funny. You're the product of everything that you speak of. Good. Yeah. You're absolutely... 100% correct, Anthony Johnson. I must have listened to Earl Nightingale lead the field 100 to 150 times. That many times. Some of the parts I can recite almost verbatim. Sweet Supreme. Scheme Incorporated works just like it used to land a banking job last month. Okay. Rockstone. Glennon, I get... I get about not chatting up experience, skilled female business partner come. Uh, were you looking for your, no, I wasn't looking for her, but that's a good question. I think I know where you're going. What I did was, let me walk you through the steps. I made a lot of money selling used office furniture. Then I got the fancy idea that I wanted to sell new office furniture. Did $1.2 million and only elked out $35,000, $40,000 in profit, which my friends were like, man, that's great. That's awesome. You should keep going. But I was looking backwards at 
the money that I made selling used stuff. So I said, I need to find some more used stuff. So I started, once again, the law of execution. I started actually looking for used stuff. I got in my car, went to a garage sale. That's where I met my partner. A lot of you, and I'm 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 gonna say this. A lot of you who are looking for business partners, should be in the act of the business and you will find them. Many of you are looking for business partners before you even start it. You've done no work, you've laid no groundwork, so you really don't even know that much about your business yet and you're looking for a partner whereas if you got started and you were out there executing, playing the game, you would come across people who could be immensely helpful for you because See, there's the law of motion. When you're in motion, you generate a lot of energy. But when you're still, you generate no energy. So you just being in motion, going to networking events with intent and purpose, you you will find someone. Uh, She was extremely important. Extremely. All right. Pam will see when I need a boost to listen to Glennon and Napoleon. Cool. <laughs> what the? What is this? All right, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Ganji, Glennon, the real Pete Street, the the Red Pill Street pharmacist. That's funny. I like it though. Um. Eric Williams, it's all about perspective. The men looking at the bus stop, a big booty Betty and broke Lisa with kids. <laughs> Rob Roy, sub Glennon, kind of late, but I had to come out and drop a little like real quick. Also, which course is best for people with challenge credit? Um, Let's see. Let's just do this real quick. Because... There are so many courses, and I've made so many changes. Let me just look at it. Let me look at it. And because I I should mark this. I think I should have changed the name. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Good Lord. All right. I think I have a bundle. Let me check this. Let me make sure so I'll tell you the right thing. All right. So what you want to do, let me make sure that I'm telling you the right thing. You want to get how to fix, let's see, super credit alternative cash flow. And... Edit. Okay. They're they're a little different. If you just want to get credit, go to how to fix your credit and grow it in alternative cash. And super credit is if you want to build a business and fix your credit at the same time. So that's the difference. Kevin Davis, Earl Nightingale, is that dude for real? Uh-oh, Erica, I wrote down smart men, tech job, and living alone. <laughs> the next five dates were were men who were outstanding, amazing tech nerds, best dates in years. I'm going to tell you, one of the things that I'm doing is I'm giving you upper-level game under a disguise. When I said that you should, like Erica did, write down your ideal mate, that empowers you so much because this is what happens. You ever notice you buy a car? Let's say you buy a red red Honda. Then you notice something that all of a sudden you see red Hondas everywhere. Well, here's the thing. Those red Hondas were always there. You didn't pay attention to them because they were not activated in your mind. 
But because you now have a red Honda, you start seeing red Hondas, and they've been there the whole time. So when you write down your ideal mate, you'll start to see people who have been there all along because now you actually have defined what you want. You can't get what you want unless you define what you want. So congratulations, Erica. <laughs> Jay Fleming. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, that is funny. What's up, Stefan? I just wanted to add one brand condoms that never broke on me. Magnums break all the time. That is funny. I've never, I've never really had that situation. Traveling merchants. I read about the mirror trick in TG Magic of Believing. Is that where you learn this? No. I want you guys to understand something. I didn't, you know, if you notice, I always give credit to people who have schooled me. Earl Nightingale, Chet Holmes. If I ain't giving credit, this is 100% organic g i ain't learned this from reading any book i learned this from doing i learned this from becoming a technician i learned this becoming a competent technician in my craft that's where i learned it uh, uh what's this all great minds think alive what think alike Klein in writing goes helped a year ago. I wrote I want to make 600 bucks a week was making 400 But I had a job where I could work by myself with no manager breathing down my neck. Well, I got it. Awesome The wealth unit is it mandatory to pay off charge? No, do not pay off unless you're getting a mortgage in the bank saying you got to pay that off to get you a mortgage Don't pay them. It's not going to improve your credit Uh, ish. So what was it that made you choose a business partner? What's the story? Was she a buyer at the sale? It was like this. We we met and I was like, well, I'm looking for you stuff. She's like, well, I like garage sales and I can't find anybody to go with me. All right, fine. I'll go. Now, what made me choose a business partner? Because I was educated that I could not build a business by myself. Michael Shanley, he had Karen. Um, so many business owners, there was always, always meeting with teams of people. There was ultimately one decision maker, but was always meeting with teams of paper people. So inherently, I knew for me to get where I wanted to be that I would need a partner or a team. Um, many people are scared of that because they're not competent in their decision making ability. So I just inherently knew. If I wanted to build something, I was going to have to get someone else on board. Uh, Roxanne, Glennon, how about you two specifically on managing partnerships? The two of you were 50-50. How did you manage disagreements or power struggles or one making decisions without the others resent? I was very, very fortunate. We rarely had a disagreement and we had a written agreement. My job was logistics, marketing and sales. Her job was management, corporate structure, managing the bank accounts, and sales. We had written goals, and it just worked. There's this one thing uh, it's coming in disruptive mail on how to manage a relationship. And I'm going to tell you, and no one else is talking about this in the dating manosphere. If you write down what your wife, your responsibilities as a man and you write down what her responsibilities as a woman, your relationship is going to get much, much, much better. Brandon Green, thank you. Thanks for the super chat, honey bunny. All right. So let's see where are we with this. Awesome. This is what you're going to need. You must have, and once again, I'm going to put this up here, because if you don't have goals, 
and you you just out there hustling to hustle. You, you, you're not going to get the most bang for your buck. And let's talk about partnerships because um, do you know that you can meet a stranger who can make an excellent partner? There are certain groups of people, white people do it all the time, Asian people do it all the time, Hispanic people do it all the time. I had a Hispanic partner in the storage auction business. I don't think I ever told that story. He was the one that brought the community and I was slipping like 100, 200 bucks. You know, he's making me three and four thousand, but he know that. Uh, what? Traveling Merchant, credit video helped me, got me a new ride. Thanks. Traveling Merchant is executing. This is the thing, and I, I will always say this. I can tell who's taking the information and executing and those who are looking for magic jelly beans. The people who execute, like Traveling Merchant, get results. So congratulations. <laughs> I am never running for president of Congress. My background, hoo, 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 hoo. The wealth unit. So how do you keep debt collectors out of your bank account? So what you're telling me is they've sued you and then they went back to the court and got a garnishment. They are suing you, right? If you have a business, they're not suing the business. Can I get a hello? <laughs> you watch this channel. You know what to do. Uh, Honey Bunny. That's true on a surface issue. But if they sue you, oh, they can get at your bank account. They can take your car. Whether they sue you and get a default judgment or get a judgment. Then they go back to the court and then they get a judgment. And then they file a judgment at the county wherever you are. And they start going, after, oh, they. And they can come after you. Uh, this is one of, one of the reasons they'll talk about the Hustler LLC. If you as a man go out and set this up, and let's say you get an auto accident, and they don't know that you own a company and they sue you, they don't touch that LLC. I'm going to tell you one time I got disposed. That's when the, the opposing party's attorney calls you in. They swear you on their oath. They videotape you. It's very intimidating. And they were asking me all these kind of questions, and I just answered yes, no. And they never asked me, did I have any assets in the LLC? They never asked that question. Never once came up because this was still some stuff from my ex-wife. It never came up. And that's why one of the reasons that I rarely have personal bank accounts. I got like one or two now. I got two, but there ain't much money in there. Charlton, I'm executed by what my magic jelly beans. That's funny. <laughs> uh, I had garnishes against people, but I'm able to seize wages, but never their bank accounts. What you have to do is take a copy of the judgment to the bank. That's what you got to do. So you got to figure out where they bank. And uh, I had a friend who, who, who went through this. So literally she took a copy of her judgment because they can't tell you if that person banks there. But if they uh, he's like, look, uh, I have a judgment for such and such. And if it's a legal court order and that person has an account there, that bank has a fiduciary duty to seize that money. So it's a lot of game out there. A lot of game. All right. So once again, go below the video. Uh, it's fifty percent off. Well, you know what's happening. I'll, I'll repeat this again. I cannot get into disruptive mail. It did not accept my password, and I've emailed them, and I've posted in the Facebook group. And if they don't solve the problem tomorrow, 
then I am going to go to Think If If and start it all over again. <laughs> I think it's the videos. I just have a feeling. So you can go below and you can get 30% off, not 30%, 50% off of any course at Hustlers Kung Fu. And if you spend $350 or more, you get the first tier of disruptive mail. All right. Now, I'm going to do some. Mix, I'm going to say, what the heck? Ah, wh where is it? There we go. So, let me show y'all. <laughs> this going to be wild. All right. So this is going to be in about five minutes. <laughs> black men, alpha men. Why being a black man automatically gives you bad boy status with non-black women. So give me a little chance to get a squig of water and do some stuff. And then I'm going to start that live stream. And I expect it to be very rowdy. <laughs> very, 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 very rowdy. I'm going to drop some game like I ain't never dropped any game before. Some people are going to be mad, but... That's what we do at Disruptive Mail. All right, so that's going to start in about five, ten minutes. Uh, I'm going to drop the link here. And y'all should be getting it. Let's see what we have in here. Uh, yeah, I mean, you... you it can happen. The wealthy unit. Bally's was able to get into my bank account due to me years ago after signing up for Lexington Law Firm. They sold me out. Um, they probably had a judgment against you. Judgments last, depending upon the state, I think 10 to 20 years. Don't quote me on that because it's different for every state. And if they got a standing judgment and they go to that bank account, you got a bank at that bank. That bank's going to give up the money. Pretty much, Erica Williams. All right, so give me like five, ten minutes. I'm going to put the link here again, and uh, I'm going to drop that game. It should be very interesting. All right, so I will see you guys over at Disruptive Mail. Y'all have a good one. Hopefully you enjoyed the game. Drop a super chat real quick before we leave, and uh, I'll see you at Disruptive Mail.